Hey everybody, Joy here. It is late in the day, 3.40. It's a Thursday and it's April 27, 2023. So I thought I'd go ahead and start a few snippets for the rest of this week, which is like two more days. <laughs> now you know Thursday is my Zooming day with my friend Philly, who lives near Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so we have been Zooming off and on today. She has gotten Roger on hospice, and it just started like last weekend. So a whole bunch of people keep coming to her house. Nurses and aides and preachers and social workers and all of that sort of thing. So we had to close early today. But before we did, I finished my new blouse that you saw previously on Lucy. I put a slit on the sides. No sway back correction. Can you believe it? I'm thinking I may need a little bigger round back correction because I saw some wrinkles coming out of the sleeve, the sleeve hole, which usually means you need a round back correction. Like, say this was the back of me and there was wrinkles coming out here out of the arm's eye. Spread the back open in the middle and those will go away. So, this is my new, 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 new. I lengthened the sleeves a lot because I've always liked really short sleeves. And I lengthened them twice, actually. <laughs> and now that I did, I went in the other room and I folded this one up hard to do. I folded this one up so I could compare. I could look and see, do I really like it that long or would I like it shorter? And so I think, you tell me what y'all think, I know you will anyway, do you like it shorter or longer? Or do you think it should be even longer? Jerry wears his car down to his elbow. <laughs> but that's a boy shirt, this is a girl shirt. And I've made it longer than I usually make my shirts. Many of you have been telling me that I made it two inches longer than I usually make my shirts. So then I went in my closet and I found my yellow pants. My yellow pants are one of the many, many, many pants <laughs> I have made with this pattern. Now, I think this is the pattern you can't get anymore. But I just showed you one the other day that has an elastic waist, uh, elastic all the way around the waistband. That pattern's over in the coach, so I can't show it to you now, but I just showed it to you recently. There's lots of patterns like that, and even if you can't find one like that, take a pattern you already have and just turn it into a what my mother calls a rubber band waist. So I pulled out this pair because they're yellow, and they were just too baggy. Baggy in the thighs, baggy under the butt, just too, too baggy. So I took them in down the side and I took them in on the inside. So then I got the pattern out and I was going to do my two baggy pants fix, which is to take a tuck from the top all the way down to the bottom. And I noticed that I have already done it. Can you see how I already took the quarter inch, quarter inch and a quarter inch is a half inch. So that's a half inch out the front and a half inch out the back. That's a whole inch off the circumference of the pant leg. So, I evidently changed this between the yellow pants and the next few that I made. <laughs> so, this outfit is done. This was my whole zooming today. Finish this, take in the yellow pants, and I am just shocked. I actually took two inches out of the waistband. I mean, did I used to be really big? <laughs> I think I'm still like maybe five pounds down, so ah, I guess i got to be happy about that. So other than that, what's going on? Philly's fine. Um, her dog was barking, 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 barking because the uh, social worker lady was out in the driveway, and evidently she just likes to sit in the driveway for a while and not come in the house. I don't know what that was about. But um, she has the cutest little white dog. It's, her name is Hannah. So her little doggie makes her happy. Thank you for your kind comments about Jerry and his shoulder, his right shoulder. You know, he fell on the ice and he's got a tear in his uh, muscle back here. He's gonna go see his, um, is it called an orthopedic doctor? Um, 
Monday. And that's Oklahoma City, so I don't know if I'll go with him or not. I might. I hate driving there and driving back in the same day. If I drive up there, I want to stay overnight and then come back the next day. I don't like long, long drives. And he'll do it. He'll drive all the way up there and then drive all the way back. Doesn't bother him at all, so <laughs> we shall see. The only thing is, there's things that I would like to ask the doctor that he won't ask the doctor. And so I like to be there for that reason. But he, of course, hates it. You know, I'm, you're not my mother. <laughs> Why do I feel like your mother? <laughs> I know. So what am I going to do next? That is the question. I've got the butterflies out. I've got this. Now May 1, I will get, no, 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 no. This is that one. Over there on that quilt, I've got the, the five months hanging over there for the season in blue, block of the month. And you can still do it. You can do it anytime if you want to do it. And just go back and do the first five months. And then she's going to come up with May tomorrow. Isn't that month five? January, February, March, April, May. That is much five. Month five. Yeah. So we've done four months. So that means you would only be four months behind. And you've got a whole month to do it. So if you want to do it, you still can. You would just go to Laundry Basket Quilts and you would look at her blog. Click on blog. And on the blog, go to a season in blue, and then you can see all of the different months that we've made so far for the block of the month. And it has to do, you have to have this book, basically, is the idea, is you have to have this book, a season in blue. Okay? I do know that the one we're going to do next is the trees. So we'll probably have a whole row of trees, blue trees. Ah, that's a little odd, blue trees, but whatever. <laughs> that's what we're doing next. So, and then I've got this. This is the patchwork barn. And I think tomorrow, I don't really want to make another blouse right now. I'll put my sleeve back down. I don't really want to make another blouse right now. I'm just kind of not in the mood. You have to be in the mood, don't you know? You have to be in the mood. And I'm not in the mood for some reason. I don't know why. If it's because Jerry's going to the doctor and it's up in the air about his arm and is he going to have to have surgery, is he not going to have surgery, plus I just bought all this fabric and it just came up here out of the washer and dryer. And someone just asked me in a comment, how do I wash it? Well, I could swear I just told you how I wash it, but I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> Remember, it's all 100% cottons. Cottons shrink. I want them to shrink. I want them to shrink totally and get it all done. So there's no shrinkage in the future. Now I understand denim, you're supposed to wash two or three times, but this is just 100% cotton. So I wash them in the washing machine. I throw the color catcher sheets in there. How many? At least two, sometimes three. Then I throw in one of those little puffy things. It's like the stuff you put in your dishwasher. That's the kind of stuff I have I put in my washing machine. It's not for the dishwasher, it's for the washing machine, but it's those little puffy pillow soapy things. And so I throw one of those in there. And then I wash them. Then I do an extra rinse on them. I always do an extra rinse because I want to make sure all the soap is out. And so then I put them in the dryer and I just wash them on normal heat because I want them to shrink. Let's get the shrinking out of our system. <laughs> okay, that's how I do it. So I have all of those up here out of the dryer. They're hanging on the kitty quilt. And I need to go over there and iron them and get them rolled up on the bolts. And I have a whole, whole bunch of fabric I have taken out of my shelves that I'm going to give away. So I need to uh, find a box to put all of that in. And I need to just get busy. <laughs> so I'll let you go for now. <laughs> Good uh, Saturday morning, everybody. What are y'all doing today? Are you sleeping in? <laughs> Boy, we did. We slept in until 8 o'clock. And we slept in the RV. I asked Jerry last night, just before dark, can we go sleep in the RV? <laughs> and he's so sweet. He sleeps in a chair now anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. As long as he's got a recliner to sleep in. So, um, he just came up. I told you we slept in the RV. So, I had my coffee, had my toast, and... 
about ready to leave and come over here and get showered and everything. And he stayed there. And he was on his laptop looking up things. And so, let me see, I came home about 8.30 or 9, and it's almost 11, and he just came home a few minutes ago. So, what time is this at me? Because I want to tell you what he's been doing all this time. <laughs> That's over an hour. He was on his laptop looking up the surgeries that they do on shoulder injuries. And he found some YouTube site where they showed the actual surgery and what they do, including drilling holes in your bone. Ouch! <laughs> and it shows that you can't move your arm at all for a whole month after the surgery. But he has decided that for sure he is going to have the surgery. So we'll go see his doctor. Well, he'll go. I won't go because I told you he goes all the way up to Oklahoma City and all the way back 150 miles there, 150 miles back. That's too much driving for me in one day. He can listen to the radio and be perfectly content and um, it doesn't hurt his shoulder. Oh, he can't drive at all. So for at least a whole month, we won't be able to go anywhere in the RV and I'll have to do all the driving wherever we do go. But right now, months go by like weeks used to go by. So I think it'll go really fast. And I don't know, of course, if he's going to have to wait a week to get the surgery or a month to get the surgery or what. The doctor said he did need to have it done uh, pretty uh, quick if he waited another month. And so, what are you doing, Joy? What are you doing? I'm going to show you in a minute. So, he just came up here and gave me the announcement and told me all about the video and what they do and everything like that. So, he is going to have the surgery. Hopefully it will be quickly, like maybe even next week. That would be wonderful. <laughs> but he can't have the surgery until I'm up there with him. And unfortunately, we have family up there, but I have one sister who says I'm not allowed to ever come to her house. And um, I'm not allowed to ever go to her son's house in Arkansas either. And then, of course, I have the issues with... Um, <clears throat> or kids that live there. I have a brother there that is very, very nice. And But, you know, even if you do have somebody, you know, nobody wants you staying with them for a week. And I'm assuming, now I could be wrong, but I'm assuming that they do the surgery and then they want to see you again in a few days or in a week or something. So, since I don't like the ride, <laughs> I would rather stay there for a week, get whatever has to be done, and then come home for the month. But I'll keep you posted on that, and uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to take uh, the RV, so I won't be able to sew. Gee, I wish we still had our house up there. That sure would be nice. Oh, let me see. I have two friends there. I have a friend named Mary. I can't stay at her house. I have a friend named Margaret. I can't stay at her house. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. What the heck? What happened to when you used to go and you used to stay with people? I remember when we were growing up. When we would go on vacation, we stayed with people all over the United States. Mom and Daddy uh, had cousins everywhere, or a sister, or a brother, or something, and we would stay in their houses. Remember staying in their basements and sleeping on blow-up mattresses, and Mom and I sleeping in the same guest room at somebody's house, and you know, we never stayed in a hotel. But I might try to find the kind of hotel like Philly and I used to stay in. Philly and I used to travel together to go take fitting classes. And where did we go? Was it Tulsa? We had that nice hotel. Something, I don't think it was Embassy Suites. I can't remember the name of it. But it was a really, really nice place and it was not that expensive. And it had two bedrooms. It had this big kitchen living room in the middle and then one bedroom was one way and the other bedroom was the other way and each bedroom had its own TV. It was really, really nice, and it had a big kitchen table, and we could sew on it, and we could cut things out, and oh, it was wonderful. So I'll have to look and see if I can find some place like that. I bet you I can. That way, I can sneak a sewing machine in that place. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okay, what am I doing? You remember my barn. Notice. I did change the door and I did change the windows. 
Now, somebody said they didn't like the brown door, and so I took it out and I put in a real light colored door. Well, I didn't like the real light colored door. So I took it out and I put in a piece of uh, fabric that actually is in the quilt. It's in the quilt. There's lots of this beige in this quilt. So I made that the door and I changed the windows to a real light color. So I hope you like that better. I'm not doing it anymore. That took me half a day just to do that. <laughs> so then I decided to start sewing down all the applique. Now I can do that. Becky called me one day and she said, you need to start doing this applique like I do it with the skin and cut and everything. Well, I don't want to do that. I can do this faster than she can do that. I, we could sit here side by side and have a contest. I guarantee you, I can do this faster than she can do that. Because I've, I've done it for so long. And I just can go around circles and go around squares and go around points. And I can just do it. However, however, <sighs> I about went stark raving mad over the sewing machine, the thread holder, the invisible thread. I'll show you. Hold on. You would think in this day and age of multiple thousands of dollars for a sewing machine that these companies could invent one that would hold the thread without it popping out of the guides. That is just nuts. Well, these Berninas don't. The thread's always popping out of the guides. I just hate it. Bernina Jeff has made a wonderful, wonderful new addition to the new machines that you can screw in or clip on, and it's another little eye that you can put your thread through, and it stays. It's wonderful. But I was using my 1130, which is my oldest machine in this room, my 930s in the coach. And I could not get the thread to behave. Now, I had the black, the big black heavy one with the tall metal hook on it, and I really liked it, but it kept turning and turning and turning, and one of you told me, hey, you need to tighten the little screw. Well, <laughs> I found a hole that the little screw went in, but there was no little screw, so that's what was wrong with that thread holder. So then I bought this one, and I put some of this um, Gorilla Tacky stuff. Have y'all used this? It's super cool. You rub it around in your hands like it was bubble gum. And then you can stick it to anything and it will stay, probably won't stay on cloth. But I put that on the bottom to make it stay still on my table. And then I ran, this is the invisible thread, it's got the, uh, the netting on it. It comes up through the top and then through this hole. I didn't think that this would be a problem at all. I thought, oh, isn't that wonderful? That should work great. Well, it doesn't. You know why? I will show you. Do you see this little hook right here? The thread gets itself wrapped around this coil and then it pulls and it makes a huge mess on what you're sewing. Isn't that crazy? Why didn't they make that a solid circle instead of a coil like that? Oh, frustrating, frustrating. So, the thread would pop out of the guide on my Bernina. The thread would get tied up in that coil, and I would just be going along, and all of a sudden the thread would break. And I would look down, and it hadn't been sewing right. <sighs> then I decided that maybe it was the bobbin thread. So I changed the bobbin thread. I decided to change the bobbin thread to blue, because then if it popped to the top, it wouldn't show so much. So I'll show you how much I got done. Can you tell my sewing, sewing, sewing? So, I got it done as far as I could get the paper. I couldn't get the paper big enough to go, well, I could have, but I didn't. So I figured I would just do all, all that part, and then I'd tear that paper off and do this part. So I've got this part left to do today. So the first thing I decided in my lightning fast mind this morning was, change to the new machine that has the extra thread guide on it. Duh! <laughs> what am I wearing? 
I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to look for it because I really like it. Yeah, I think that shows. Do you see the sleeves? On the blouse that you saw at the first clip, the first snippet, I told you I didn't like the sleeves, and I didn't. I ended up cutting them off two inches. Changed both the sleeves. I actually cut two inches off the bottom of the blouse because I didn't like it either. I thought it was too long. What happens if you could see all of me with that long blouse, and this one's that long too, but this one's curved and it comes up on the sides, and I like that. But what happens is it like cuts your legs off, and it just makes, it's not a good proportion. Peggy Sagers has a book. It's got a zillion errors in it, and I pointed that out to her one time, and she said her father proofread it, and I said, well, there's an error on almost every page, and she said to me, I'm sure people can figure out that S-H-O-L-D-E-R means shoulder. So, she keeps having it printed. Don't you think she could just correct? I mean, Peggy, I love Peggy. I never miss her. But why is she so careless about correcting mistakes? I do not understand that in a person. My mother would have had a fit and a half. So, if I didn't correct my mistakes. My mother always said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And that is true. So I really like this. I don't know what pattern it is yet. I'll tell you later in this video because I'm fixing to find it. <laughs> and the pants. Remember my tutorial on the pants. Flat on the front and elastic just in the back. I love it. I love these pants. They're wonderful. Now let me talk about pants for a minute. You know I showed you the other day the uh, Kona fabric. And I told you that I really like pants out of Kona. Well, you have to understand that it's a very lightweight cotton. And it's going to make a very lightweight pant. And it's not something you would wear to church. It's not something you would wear to a tea party. You definitely the grocery store. Definitely to the Mexican restaurant down the street. <laughs> but if you want a nicer weight of a pant and a more sturdy pant, I have made several out of twill. It's like a denim, but it's not a denim. Or maybe it's a denim, I don't know. Doesn't a denim have like two colors? Let me look. Yes, this is a denim. Where did I find purple denim? I don't know, because I'd love to find it in every color. I love this fabric. This fabric holds a crease. It presses really nice. It feels nice. And of course, I pre-wash it so it doesn't shrink. So I'm going to find this pant pattern. This was SureFit Designs, and I did a whole tutorial on it. If I can find the tutorial, it should be in a playlist. But for some reason, my playlists are kind of messed up. I don't know why. But I'll see if I can find that. In case you're interested, I'd like to watch it myself. <laughs> you know, when you haven't done something for a long time, you forget what you did. So, love the pant. Doesn't have pockets, but that's okay. Um, usually, I have Jerry with me, and I just use his pockets. <laughs> I put my cell phone in one of his pockets, put my Kleenex in one of his pockets, put my shopping list in one of his pockets. It works. <laughs> I have a traveling pocket holder, man. So, I'm going to use a different machine, like I said, finish the applique on that barn, and then I'm going to start putting all of the blocks together. You put the blocks together in long rows, and then you put the rows together. And I guess where the barn is, you do shorter rows on top, shorter rows on the bottom, then attach them to the barn. But I'll be real excited to get that, that done. I, I, you know, I have all of those quilts that I'm working on listed on that tablet in the other room. And I thought, well, I could at least get the tops made. And then my list would only be quilts that have to be quilted. So I think that would be great. Of course, you always have to find a backing. I really get stalled when it comes to finding the backing. I have battings out there in my attic. but And I have backings, too, <laughs> that I thought I would use someday. But they're never the right color. <laughs> so, I'll have to figure out what I've got for this quilt. I think I actually have one. Look, hold on. Look at this. Backing, binding, backing, binding. For the barn. I'm so excited. <laughs> I should have shown you yesterday the disaster I had <laughs> trying to sew with my 1130. I was over there sewing on that. 
Now the problem with that machine is it does not have a horizontal thread spool. And I didn't realize how important that was. <laughs> so over here, on the machine I'm using today, which is the, somewhere here, B570, it has a horizontal spool. So I put a little hoozy thing down here that came with that other spool holder to hold this tight up against it so it's not just rotating around a skinny pin. And then I put this spool holder on this end and they're still netting on the invisible thread and you can see it's invisible. But see the extra... I was telling you about Bernina Jeff and how he created an extra thread holder guide. Right there it is. Isn't it awesome? It just snapped. It just snapped. Can you see how it just snapped over the handle? It's wonderful. And so then I've got it threaded the regular way, the rest of the way down. I have tightened the bobbin. Or the bobbin thread would come up to the top and you would see it. So I've tightened the bobbin. I have not changed the tension at all on this invisible thread. I'm just amazed. <laughs> I have no idea what the tension is. I don't even know how to change it. But it's working beautifully. So I'm going to show you how I applique. Now this is not like the three-part applique that your embroidery machine does. It's not going to do a straight stitch and then a little, wide, a little loose zigzag and then a real tight zigzag satin stitch. That is not what I'm doing. I am just sewing down all of this applique so it will never come up if it's washed or something. See here you can see the invisible thread holding that down. So I'm going to show you how I do it real quick. Now you can see that really good. I found a good embroidery foot, praise the Lord, <laughs> in another sewing machine. So this, this machine did not come with an open toe embroidery foot or a closed toe or anything. So I got this out of a machine, out of my Virtuosa 155 machine. And at first it said, that's not the right foot, you're not there allowed to use it. But, I don't know, I just kept pushing buttons and finally it decided it was the right foot and it's letting me use it. So, <laughs> you see how nice it is, a little open toe. So, let's go, Joe. I hope I don't run into the tripod or something. So, I ha first I start out with a straight stitch. And I straight stitch from here up to the point. Now I'm going to zigzag. Feed dogs are down. Feed dogs are down. I don't want the feed dogs moving. I'm going to be the main feed dog here. Just me. <laughs> okay? Now, hopefully I can do this without making a mess now that somebody's watching me. I'm going to test the zig and the zag and make sure I'm going to put it right on the tippy 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 tip of that leaf. Okay? Now here I go. This way I don't have to turn it like if I was doing the satin stitch all the way to the tip, then I'm just going to go back up the other side, see? If I was doing the satin stitch, I would have to do it much different. Then I'm going to put it on single stitch and tack it and cut it. This leaf is done. Since it's invisible thread, if it's not exactly perfect, who's going to care? It's all going to be quilted on top of. The, the hardest part is of getting all this invisible thread off of here. <laughs> the worst part about invisible thread is it's invisible. Now, I don't know if I can sew that leaf on. No. Now the rest of this doesn't have any stabilizer behind it. So I have to take all this stabilizer off and then get a new piece of stabilizer. What am I using for stabilizer? I'm using totally stable. It's just paper with a shiny side. And the shiny side will iron down onto the fabric. It doesn't do a very good job. <laughs> it doesn't stay very good, so I'll always put the safety pins in to hold it. And of course, once you've started sewing on it, and there's just a mess from yesterday, just a mess. You can see here it's a mess where the uh, back thread didn't even zig or zag, but the 
clear thread came through the back and it actually is covered on the edges so oh my goodness I wish I had started with this machine it is doing a beautiful job if changing the needle doesn't work if changing the foot doesn't work if changing the spool holder doesn't work go buy a new sewing machine <laughs> I've decided that's what you have to do <laughs> Okay, so it took me hours, literally, to find these patterns. I put this and this on here, which is a camper shirt I made for the RV, but I didn't put the purple fabric that I'm wearing. So I took a picture. Put a picture or put a piece of the fabric or you'll never figure it out. So that's my SureFit Design shirt. And I took a picture of me and my pants that are all wrinkled now. This is denim and it wrinkles too. Everything wrinkles. <laughs> And so this is my SureFit Designs pants with the elastic. So I found them, found them. I'm so excited. I've been working, working, working on the barn. I got everything sewn down. I got all of the paper pulled off the back, which took forever. <laughs> so you want to see what I've got done? That's my forever goodwill right there. I'm giving away a ton of sulky thread to goodwill. All of that thread, it is a Sulky 30 weight. I've had it for 15 years and I never use it because, and the thread racket was on. It's going to. I'm lightening the load around here. <laughs> anyway, I always have a Goodwill bag. So let's see what I've been doing. Are you excited? I sure am. <laughs> on the floor is every single set of 24 blocks. Every set has three of the same block in it. It took me forever and ever and ever <laughs> to make all those blocks because I did so many of them over and over and over because they never come out the right measurement. So here we go. That's how it's going to work. That top section gets all sewn together so it's one big rectangle. And then there will be sections on each side of the barn. That will be one big rectangle. Then there'll be another rectangle like on the top. It'll be down there on the bottom. And then there's a big wide border on the left and a big wide border on the right. So, wow. What a lot of work. <laughs> and I did change the door and the windows in the barn. You can see and everything's all applique down. I'm so excited I found that other machine to do the applique with. Because when I do the two long borders, oh, I'll be able to do them so much faster. It's Sunday. Last day of April 2023. It's May tomorrow. Can you even believe it's May tomorrow? Oh my goodness. And tomorrow, Jerry's going to go see the doctor about getting his surgery on his shoulder. So hopefully we can get on with that project pretty soon. But speaking of projects, <laughs> check this out. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think? There's one, two, three, four, seven rows across, and each row has 12 six inch blocks in it. And each block has three of itself. Three of each block. So I'm not going to sew it together just yet. I think I need a bigger flannel board. What do you all think? <laughs> And you know what? I think this is really pretty without the borders on the side. It's got borders on the side that has the uh, applique, you know. But I think it's looking pretty cute like that and plenty big. But isn't it colorful? So what I have to do is I have to stare at it for a while and make sure I don't have two of the same blocks right next to each other or right on top of each other or catty corner to each other or something like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> like the baskets. There's a basket here, there's a basket here, and there's a basket here. See? Three baskets. There's a bear claw here, there's a bear claw here, and a bear claw here. See? And so each one has three. So I want to make sure that they're separated. Now on the spool, see the thread spool? I made one standing up. And I made two laying, no, I made two standing up and one laying down. So I thought that would give it a little different look. There's a couple blocks I can do that with. 
I think I'll just sit in the chair here across the room and stare at it for a little bit and make sure nothing looks funny about it. And then I think I'll sew together this top, this top big rectangle. See? And then there's the middle big rectangle and then the bottom big rectangle. And of course I have to cut a bunch more of these sashing strips. But what do you think? I think it looks a million trillion times better than the pictures that you see of it. It really does. Now I'm, I'm seeing two things and I don't like the way they are. Look here. This and this are in the same row. So we can't have that. So let's just switch something. Let's put that there and this here. See? And so then come back and look some more. Now, how are we doing? I couldn't even tell you what block I just moved. <laughs> you could stare at this for hours and keep changing it around. <laughs> but I've got to. I've got to figure out what to do, so I'm going to have to go. I'll be back. <laughs> it's May. It's May. The lusty month of May. That lovely month when everyone goes blissfully astray. It's here, it's here, that shocking time of year. When something or other little thoughts merrily appear. I know I can't sing very good, <laughs> but it's May. I know, I have to say that. I bet nobody knows what movie that came from. Oh, I love it. I wish I could turn it on and play it for you, but you know, it's against the law. You could go to music jail or something. My goodness, they put innocent people in jail all the time now. It's terrible. It really is. It's May 1, 2023. Yay forever. <laughs> what is wrong with her today? Oh my gosh. Same thing that's wrong with me every day. <laughs> I always wake up happy. Because <laughs> I have such a cute husband. He's adorable. He's on his way to the doctor. He has been so sweet. He keeps hugging me and kissing me and trying to do things for me because he feels guilty for falling on the ice. You know, the day I told him, whatever you do, don't walk on the ice. You can stay out of the barn for one day. Don't walk on the ice. It'll only be here one day. It'll be gone tomorrow. Don't walk on the ice. And he did, and he fell, and he's hurt his shoulder real bad. So I think he feels bad for me because... He's not going to be able to use his right arm for at least four weeks, maybe six. So, I'm going to have to do all the things he usually does. <laughs> but hey, I just praise God every second, every moment of every day that the man is alive and he's here. And I don't care how much he irritates me. I thank God his shoes are in the way and I almost tripped over them. I thank God his jeans are stacked up on the chair because... <laughs> He has this thing where I'll wash all his jeans, and he has a hundred pair of jeans, his work jeans that he works outside in, so they get dirty like every day. So I'll wash four to six pair a week sometimes. And he'll fold them all up, and then he folds them in half, and he folds them in half, and he stacks them on the chair. <laughs> Instead of hanging them in the closet. <laughs> it's like, Jerry. <laughs> but I love him. I see his little stack of jeans on the chair, and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, when you almost lose a loved one to cancer or to whatever, you know, and the doctor tells you he's got a 50% chance of living, and um, if he doesn't have the chemotherapy, he will definitely die. It's scary. It is heart-wrenching. So it really changes the way you think about your husband and all of his little things that he does. And good grief. I have zero, zero, less than zero room to complain or talk or criticize. If you could see this room, I've got one recliner full of new fabric there. I've got another recliner full of new fabric there. I have another recliner that's got two pillows because I saw Edita Sitar make this cute 4th of July pillow, so I decided I needed to make one, and they only came in two, so I have two pillows. I have the uh, Safe Harbor quilt laying on this recliner. I have two plastic bags on the floor and a plug-in strip down underneath here because that's what these used to be in. <laughs> he never 
ever complained about all the stuff I have all over up here. So, anyway, he's just super, super cute, and I love him. All right. Here it is. What do you think? <laughs> I have these four sewn together and this sewn to this. I have these four sewn together and sewn to this. I have these four sewn together and sewn to this. And see how it falls? <laughs> I have a lot left to do for sure. Then I have these four sewn together, but nothing sewn to it. These four, these four, these four. That took me hours and hours and hours. You know why? Because some, you know, I'm a terrible piecer. And some of my blocks are a little bit big. And some of my blocks are a little bit small. <laughs> and there was a certain one, I think it's called a pinwheel. This one. This one has to be redone. I'm working on it in the other room. And it is like a quarter inch too big. Instead of six and a half, it's six and three quarters. <sighs> and of course there's three of them. I can't even find the other one. It's up here somewhere. These things just blend in. Here it is right here. These things just blend into each other. So these two are going in the trash. And I've already got one redone. Where's the one I redid? Here's the one I redid. It's already sewn on. Look at here. Quarter inch bigger. Yeah, it is. It's a quarter inch bigger. Just forget that. Those two are going in the trash. <laughs> I've already got the other two ready to put together. Let me get a sippa. I bet you thought I wasn't going to do a sippa. Well, you were wrong. -a. <laughs> I just made this fresh cup of coffee. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. This is an insert. Raise your hand if you noticed a boo-boo block in my quilt. Who noticed it? Who noticed it? Oh, everybody but me. Oh. <laughs> you know, editing this and looking at the quilt on the video is helping me see things really good. And I noticed that this block has a major defect in it. <laughs> I don't even know how I can fix it, but this blue square is supposed to be over here. So, I think all I have to do is flip it and unsew it here, here, and here, and then flip it. And I think I can fix that one. If I could quit, when I, when I make quilts, it seems like I spend half my time going backwards. That seems to be my thing. So let's find the other two and see if they're right. You know, there's three of everything. Here's one down here, that's correct. And here's one right here, and that's correct. Now look here, we have two in the same row. And I won't allow that to happen. So, I'm going to put this, like, right there, maybe. No. Let me see. Can that work? Yeah. So now I'll have one, two, and three. Can that work? I don't know. I think maybe I'll move it to here. And I'll move this to here. You know, you could do this for a year. <laughs> you really could. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, but wouldn't you hate to get it all done and all on the long arm and all quilted and hang it up and then see this mess? Oh, you know, remember how I had the pitcher in front of the watermelon instead of the watermelon in front of the pitcher on my season's quilt and I had to unquilt it and unsew it and fix it and then requilt it. Yeah, I cannot stand boo-boos like this when you got this many blocks. So please tell me, you won't hurt my feelings, I promise you. If you see any more blocks in here that don't look right, please tell me. Please tell me. But I'm taking this one in there and I'm going to fix it now. So end of insert. So you know by now this is the quilt I'm making, patchwork quilt block of the month from the quilt show years ago. 2018 was it? It was a while back. <laughs> and I am just now getting it all put together. I am not doing it like hers. I'm not going, all right this block goes here and this block goes here and this block goes here. I'm doing my own. So that way mine will be 
original, sort of, because my blocks will be in a different configuration. Because, uh, who has the time? <laughs> now, here's the hardest part that's not done yet. See the borders here? The borders that have all of the applique. So, not hard for me. Now, I can do applique, no problem. <laughs> but it's going to take a while. And it's going to make this quilt pretty wide. This is a 75 by 79, so it's not that big, is it? Not like it's a king size or even a queen. But, oh, it is very unusual. And I am very proud that I've almost made it. Ah, yes I am. Oh, and look, here's my cutting glove. The problem with these don't cut your hand off gloves is they're all over the house. <laughs> because I forget to take it off, see? I'll put it on and then I'll remember to take it back in my room. <laughs> so this, this snippet video is getting too long. So I probably need to end it here and get it up on YouTube so you can watch it. I've got the butterflies on the floor now. <laughs> but I am, I'm getting quilts done. Now Jerry's going to be immovable. His arm's going to be stuck for at least a month, maybe six weeks. So I doubt we're going to be going anywhere. And um, I'll probably have time to get several of my quilts off this list over here that y'all watched me make one day. It says to finish in 2023. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. And um, I think I'm just going to like finish the tops and just stack them all up somewhere. And then they will be in the to be quilted stack. See? So that's how that will work. But isn't it fun? And if you don't like my door or my windows, please don't tell me. Because I don't want to do them again. I've already done it too many times. Alrighty. That's it for today. And I'm going to end this video and start another one, I guess. Um... I don't really have anything to do but go buy groceries. And Philly and I both agree on buying groceries. We hate going to the grocery store anymore. And at the rate things are going, there may not be any grocery stores. The way they are shutting down businesses, we just watched a YouTube the other night. Twelve big businesses going out of business. Dollar General was one of them. I'm like, Dollar General? We, that's all we have here in Kingston is a Dollar General. We have a Dollar General and a Family Dollar, and they're both busy constantly. It's like our little Walmart, and I don't go to them much, but most of the people down here do. What will I buy there? I'll buy nothing, really. I used to go there when we owned the business right down the street, and I would go there for um, those oatmeal cookies that have the frosting on top, and I would buy Chex Mix. And I used to go there and get that quite a bit. But other than that, maybe toilet paper for the store, stuff like that. But every time I was in there, it was not unusual to stand in line. Because people, people buy a lot of things here. They don't have a lot of food, but they have some food. But I, I can't imagine Dollar General going out of business here. Because we'd have nothing in Kingston. That would be really sad. And they're closing bunches of Walmarts. And if they keep passing that insane law that you can go into a store and steal $750, it's that like every day. You can take your whole, come on kids, let's go shopping. And everybody get a shopping cart. And each kid steals $750. And the husband and the wife steal $750. And the aunt and the uncle and the mom and the dad. Is this even America? Is this even America? I think that they're probably going to change the name soon to China too. Yeah. It's sad, people. It's sad. All right, let's don't go there because that's depressing. <laughs> let's stay happy, happy, happy. As hard as it is to. You've got to stay informed. I mean, you have to. You have to know how to vote. You have to know, do I vote no? Do I vote yes? You have to be informed enough to be able to vote properly but you don't want to watch the news all the time to where you just want to take three or four Valium and never get up again and I don't have any Valium so don't worry about that but I do know a lady that killed herself taking a bottle of Valium oh life is so hard for so many people I feel so blessed 
that even in this America that we now live in, full of crime and turmoil and idiotic laws, um, we're safe down here in our little country house. Are you still going to move? I don't know if we're going to move. Right now, we're into Jerry's shoulder, and that's another six weeks, and that's from the day he gets it fixed, and we have no idea when that's going to be. So, right now, we're not moving. We're just staying here, but we are getting everything fixed, and we're getting rid of lots of things that, if we do decide to downsize and move, we'll have a lot less to move. You know, there's no sense... Move. I just got a pair of shoes out of my closet this morning. And they're nice shoes for Bandolino. I used to have them in black and brown and navy and a whole bunch of them. I used to wear them to work all the time, 10, 15 years ago. Well, I have one pair that I have never worn. <laughs> and they're real pretty. They're a cream color and they have like gold binding around them. And they're pretty. But every single time I put them on, I think, oh my gosh, those look just terrible on my feet. And square toes are out. Nobody wears square toes anymore. And so I take them off and put them back in my closet. They're brand new. I've never worn them except to do that. <laughs> so I said, that's it. These are going out. They're going to the Goodwill. Somebody will love wearing these. And um, there's no sense having them in my closet. I bet I've got 20 other pair of shoes in there that I never wear. So, you know, I have these just in case. Just in case my feet quit swelling. Just in case my very high arch decides to go down someday. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. So we need to get rid of these just-in-case items, uh, just in case we decide to move. <laughs> All right, my friends. I'm going to end this snippet bill right here, but I'll be back soon.